Hello and welcome to episode 4 of How to Code Games in BBC Basic. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at Mode 7 text and the various ways in which you can manipulate text while in Mode 7. Okay, so we're going to start with lines 110 to 140. Now, this, on the face of it, looks like a fairly straightforward set of variable declarations, uh, each one of which is using the character string function um, to designate a particular value. Uh, now, the character string function is really just a way of um, saying which particular uh, character, which could be a number, a letter, or a punctuation mark, or something like that, um, that you want that variable to store. Uh, now these, on the face of it, look like they're basically just giving uh, letters and numbers uh, to be stored in each one of these variable declarations here. Um, but we need to unpack this a little bit more. So if I pop into my uh, BBEM emulator, we can see how the character string function typically works. So if I wanted to print the letter C, for example, uh, I could obviously just do it like this. Um, nothing particularly difficult about that. Uh, but the alternative I could use is I could use the character string function and character 67. So character 67 in mode 7 is in fact the letter C in uppercase. Um, so therefore you might think that each one of these variables here is a letter or a number or a punctuation mark, but that's not entirely the case. Now as we mentioned in the previous video, uh, the way that you can manipulate things in mode 7 is by the use of what are called control characters. Now a control character doesn't actually look like anything in particular. So for example, if I take this first one here, this, um, this L, str um, L string variable, if I was to try and print that, uh, print string 141, it doesn't really look like it's done anything um, and if I try and hit some keys and it's just nothing really seems to be happening here uh, similarly if I try the next one along so character string 129 there which is uh, being stored in the R string variable again it doesn't really seem like anything has happened now the reason for this is because these are control characters and you actually have to use them in combination with something that follows them. So the control character by itself won't appear to do anything, but if you then append something after it, it will. So uh, let's stick with the, uh, the R string one that we've got defined there. So if instead of just writing that line of 129, I also append, hello, ah, now it's in red but you'll notice that now that i'm on the next line I, i've gone back to white text again um, so if i want to continue in red text i have to on the next line continue with uh, the character string 129 um, followed by whatever other text i might want to write so if i wanted to do a, a, a full hello world for example i might have to do another line like that so that's what character string 129 is doing. So if we return to the variable declarations here, although they don't have particularly descriptive names, um, and that's really just a limitation of the programming language, unlike more modern programming languages where you can be fairly descriptive with your variable names, in BBC Basic it helps if you try to keep variable names to a minimum, um, whilst still retaining some degree of um, sense about what they actually store. So each one of these is, as you can tell from the rem statement, is actually a color character control control code. So R string stands for red, G is for green, Y for yellow, B for blue, M for magenta, C for cyan, and then we've got FL which is flashing and ST which is static. And the reason that you might want to have these is because if you want to have flashing text followed by some static text on the same line you would need to invoke the flashing character 136, have some text that you want to have flashing, and then invoke the static string uh, character 137 uh, followed by the text that you want to be static so we can see what that looks like so if I decide um, I want to have let's say print uh, 136 flashing um, but then maybe I want character string 137 whoop, not flashing like so there we go. So I can have the first word flashing and then followed by not flashing. Now, actually, it turns out I didn't need to put the space uh, in front of the not because although a character, um, sorry, a control character, I should say, does not actually achieve anything in, in itself, it does take up at least one space on the screen. So actually that that uh, need to put a space there um, uh, in, in between the, uh, the open quotation mark and the not was actually not necessary. And I could just as easily have uh, not put that space in. 
So that's how these control characters are working here. And, and really, um, I've got a program that I prepared earlier. So I've put all of these in uh, into line numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, as per the, um, the, the variable names that you can see. And the reason for doing this really is it just makes it simpler. So rather than having to invoke character string brackets 136 close brackets every time, I can just make use of the variable names. So if I was to continue this program now with line 10, I could do print, um, let's say L, uh, sorry, R string, this is in red, and then I could do um, a Y string, oops, this is in yellow. And if I run that program, I get the text alternating and you can really combine these as in, in many different ways as you like. So if I want to have red flashing text, for example, I could indeed do uh, replace or replace uh, line 10 with R string and F, uh, I think it might be FL string R string and then hello. Ah, there you go. Now we have it flashing in red. So the use of the flashing control character can be used in combination with a particular color and you can achieve much the same effect as if you were using flashing red black in um, conventional BBC basic outside of mode seven. So that's pretty much all of the control characters in lines 110 to 140, except for the first one. Now that one's a slightly mysterious one because L doesn't stand for a color. So strictly speaking, it doesn't really belong with these other um, control characters here in the program, but it's one of the nifty features of mode seven that is definitely worth unpacking a little bit further. So the L string control character is doing something um, quite interesting. So we'll make use of it because we've got it defined in line one in our program here. So I'm going to write um, a, a print statement using L, L string followed by hello and run. Ah, now that's interesting. We seem to have what looked like the beginning of um, a hello there, but it kind of looks like it's been chopped off um, part way through. Now the reason for that is because the L uh, string variable here is being used uh, as a control character um, for large text. That's what the L stands for, it's just large. Now to make use of the large text, you actually need to invoke a print statement twice. So if I really want to uh, achieve that, I'm going to abbreviate my print statement just so that I can fit all of this onto one line without having to go onto the next line. So you invoke L string hello, and then on the next line, you invoke L string hello again. And now if I run it, I get it in giant text. Now notice that I had to use the L string a second time. If I had written L string, sorry, L string hello, and then just done hello on the next line, it doesn't work um, because it needs to have the uh, the extra print statement with the L string or character 141 in order for it to work correctly. Now you can do some experimental things with this, which are quite fun. Um, because it's uh, actually two separate print statements, what this allows you to do is instead of having just boring old white, we could do L string, and then Y string, and hello. And then on our next line, do another L string, and we'll do an M string for magenta, hello. And now we get this rather nice uh, double colored effect. Uh, and that's really quite quite cool. And you can use that in things like title screens. And in fact, it's actually used in that very same way uh, further down in the program. So that's the uh, the control characters uh, for uh, mode seven to invoke different colors, to invoke flashing or static text, and indeed to create this rather lovely large text. In the next video, we will take a look at the next set of control characters, specifically those that refer to the creation of graphics, the all important graphics that we will no doubt have been looking forward to. So we're going to leave that for the next video. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed looking at some text here and seeing how you can play around with text in mode seven. And as I say, in the next video, which I hope you'll join me for, we'll start to look at how you create graphics out of sixels. And until then, goodbye.